Light. Something you got used to, right? You can have light coming from the sun. Light coming from a light bulb at home. Or light coming from the screen. From where you are watching me right now. These are rather weaker forms of light with quite low intensities and whose light waves spread out in different directions. But what if we had a different kind of light, more intense, and which we could focus on a specific point in space? For that purpose, we can use a laser, which is the most coherent and approximately monochromatic form of light known so far. The interesting thing from laser pulses is that they lead to phenomena not observable in daily life. For example, by irradiating a material with a strong laser, its atoms will move faster and faster, going from solid state to gas state. Its continuous hitting will finally originate an electrified media with formal neutral particles leading to positive and negative charges split. This is called plasma state, which is the fourth state of matter. Well, this means that lasers can actually be used to produce plasma. Now, we established a relationship between plasma and lasers. Let's now introduce one of the emerging fields of study in laser plasma physics, called nanoplasmonics. Nanoplasmonics, as the word says, studies plasma states at the nanoscale. It involves metallic nanostructures that feature an interesting effect when strong lasers interact with it. Effect that is known as field enhancement. And what is field enhancement all about? Well, suppose that we have two nanostructures close to each other and the laser pulse crossing the vicinity between them. The pulse will dissociate positive and negative charges in the metal, the ions and the electrons. The electrons, which are lighter, will accelerate continuously and make an oscillator whose energy is carried by elements known as surface plasmons, the quanta of plasma oscillation. These will create resonant electromagnetic fields leading to the emission of an amplified signal. You may ask, why is all this so important? The reason is because with lower power signals we can generate fields with comparatively much higher intensities. Now, we can tune the intensity and the frequency of the emitted light by varying the size and the shape of the nanostructures, as well as its metallic composition. In my study case, I limit ultra-short laser pulses against a thin, slitted titanium foil. This study shall be performed by the use of a code called Particle in Cell Code, or Peak Code, created to simulate events of such nature with bigger intensities and charged media. The interface I shall use is called OSIRIS, which uses an iterative algorithm sustained by Maxwell and momentum equations to calculate the new electric and magnetic fields, as well as the new particle positions. This is how we will actually evaluate the evolution of temperature and density of the system in consideration. In addition, in order to reconstruct the full picture of the slitted foil, we shall use a technique called imaging diagnostics, which is sustained by two X-ray imaging methods, CDI or holography. Well, the importance of nanoplasmonics regarding the intensity increase of light signals was already highlighted. Now, in what ways can we take advantage of this study area? How can this actually become important for society? One example is by developing better, more efficient solar panels. The process for converting sunlight into usable energy has proven to be a method with quite low efficiency. The average efficiency of solar panels goes around 30%, which is not enough, having in mind the general consumption of energy nowadays. However, it may be possible to optimize the retrieval of solar energy by integrating nanostructures within the cell from solar panels. One other application is for biomedical sensing, especially for oncology. Regarding the fact that cancer is the most fatal disease worldwide, leading to millions and millions of deaths per year, makes it extremely urgent to implement new and best solutions. Amplified signals from cancer cells can be retrieved through the use of nanoplasmonic biosensors. Plasmon resonance 
allows real-time and label-free cancer markers of high fidelity, making cancer detection an easier task. Thank you for your time.